What's poppin' bro? Hi, it's your boy Mata, bro, the guy who's just a disappointment to his entire family. It's true. I'm a disappointment. I'm proud of it. Today we have someone who does music and is probably better than I am in every way possible because <laughs> we all know that I am untalented, but I'm also ugly, so I'm, I'm the worst of both worlds. Sir, please introduce yourself. Yo, I go by the name of Cam Prada. I'm a hip hop pop recording artist based out of Calgary. Yeah. And uh, a song of yours just dropped, huh? Yeah, so Sunset Boulevard just dropped yesterday. And yesterday I'll... at the time of recording this interview. Nice. And we're gonna drop a little snippet of that right now. Cause I'm in LA with it for the vibes. I got a Californian tea up on a ride. They ask me how I'm living, I'm living right, yeah. Now is you with me cause there ain't no switch size, yeah. So for this song, I first saw heard of this song because of TikTok, and this one blew up to like four. I I saw because I, I saw you like post about it a lot, but then like the one you posted like a couple of days ago blew up to like four million views. Yeah, it was insane. I couldn't believe it. And uh, tell us the story behind this song first off. So Sunset Boulevard was inspired. So it was actually written when I went to LA. So I went to LA in November of 2020, and I went to LA to shoot two music videos for completely unrelated songs, um, just different songs. Uh, so we did that, we went to LA, and then when I was in LA, I brought, I brought my mic and stuff, and I, I was planning on uh, writing music out there just because I like to write music in like different environments, just different vibes get different inspirations that way so what i ended up doing was i set up my i set up my mic and my setup outside just to like record like little demos like just nothing professional but it's just to sort of like a rough draft ideas. right yeah, yeah exactly rough draft get my ideas down so i did that and i wrote the hook for sunset boulevard um at during one of those writing sessions in la outside and it was just like this beautiful view of like the palm trees and like this crazy view um and so that's really what inspired the song and then during that trip my photographer came with me and he was getting into he also does like video stuff too so he was taking a bunch of behind the scenes videos during that trip so for the sunset boulevard music video which just dropped yesterday we half of the video was was actually shot before the song was even created so it was like the things that were inspiring me to create, to make that song, those visual elements were already just being shot through like the behind the scenes stuff from the trip. So then when we put the video together, we, we had that stuff and we had a couple other clips from like the studio session where I actually recorded the song in Calgary after, when I got back from LA. And then the remainder of the videos, uh, we just wanted to do something like fun and like lighthearted. Um, so we got a uh, production a production studio in Calgary and shot the performance scenes. So, so yeah, that's, uh, that's how that one went. And it's crazy how everything sort of just came together like that. That's, I think that's just the dream, you know, that's like the yeah. dream. go out to LA or something, get totally from vibe, catch the vibe with a song. Yeah. And then just like have the shit manifest perfectly. Right. Yeah. 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 So then it, it went crazy on TikTok and we actually got, like 16,800 pre-saves on the song on Spotify, which was like, <laughs> I was just like, I was just looking at it and like, I just refreshed and it would go up like a hundred pre-saves when, when the video was going viral. Like, I was just like, what the heck is happening? So it was crazy. I, I was really happy and that, um, that video did that because yeah. Yeah. That's, that's sick. So like, uh, so that one, and like in the video, you're saying that your parents were like, dude, why the hell are you going to LA or something? Yeah. So basically it was sort of like the struggle between like continuing school and like dropping out to like pursue my passion. So I think a lot of maybe immigrant people with immigrant parents can like relate to just even like brown people, like there's less brown people in like arts, the arts or like creative avenues. Right. Yeah. So um, a bit of the response I've been getting from that, TikTok video was like, yo, this inspired me to like pursue this or like, yo, like the fact that you're doing this is like amazing to me because 
usually, you know, brown parents want to be engin engineer, accountant, doctor, lawyer. So um, that was a really cool response I got from that video. And just, I was really happy that, that I was able to have that inspiration for others. That's, that's like, that's like the dream. Like, cause like, yeah, cause obviously immigrant parents, like they want you to take a safe route because yeah. they care. Exactly. Yeah. It does make sense because it's like, they came here f with nothing and you know, they, they want to make sure they don't want us to have nothing. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So yeah, it does make sense for sure. But um, yeah. Yeah. See, I'm, I was safe there because see, uh, my parents slowly realized that I was stupid. So first they're like, oh, he's going to be, he's going to be a doctor. Then they saw how bad I was at math and science. They're like, okay, not engineer, not doctor, maybe lawyer. Then I saw how stupid I was in poli sci that I'm doing right now. And <laughs> now it's like, Jalo, fuck, just be a filmmaker. See what happens at this point, right? Yeah, bro, pursue it. I mean, yeah, we're both, both of us are just so, like, so young. We still have like so much of our life ahead of us. So, I mean, you might as well pursue something you really love instead of having to like regret it for the rest of your life, you know? Yeah, because like, yeah, life is short. May as why not just live as live as much as you can, right? Exactly, exactly. That's exactly. the vibe, and that's exactly. the same vibe that we had in our soul video. So, Brahive, make sure you guys watch that because you guys. And that's pretty much that's pretty much the message behind um, Sunset Boulevard. The song. So, how did you know that you want to be a musician, like in the first place? Like how old were you? So I the first time I ever made a song was so before before I ever made my first song, like music was not like a big part of my life. Like I would listen to music a little bit, but it wasn't like I didn't have like a crazy like musical upbringing or anything like that. Like maybe I played a bit of piano for maybe like a year when I was like younger, younger, but music was never like a crazy big part of my life. And then a bunch of a bunch of things went on in my life and music just became this like really big driving force in my life and not necessarily making music but just like listening to it and like connecting with music and um yeah so at that time that was like towards the end of high school like grade 12 year um spring grade 12 or winter slash spring grade 12 year so this is like three two and a half three years ago yeah um and so my friend made me a beat for fun and he was like yo like just rap on this if you want because he was making uh edm music at the time and this was like his first like hip-hop beat he ever done so i was like okay sure so basically what i did was i just rapped on it for fun um i put it out on just on soundcloud and then like a lot of people like reposted and showed love and i was sort of taken back by that because like to be honest like the song was super bad like it was not good <laughs> it's not good like we're gonna see if your song was your song that you're about to show me is better than than my first song but uh right, it's gonna be game over for me he's gonna hear my song he's gonna leave this call and block me on every <laughs> social media <laughs> he's gonna say i killed music <laughs> uh, that's funny. but um yeah so pretty much i put it out it was pretty like not pretty bad it was super bad but people just showed love i don't i don't know why <laughs> but they just did so then from there i just slowly like went with it and um, I got to the point where I like sort of, I got to the point a few years later where I deleted all my songs and just focused on like, cause that was, that was the point where I like knew this is what I really wanted to do, but I knew I had to develop my sound more and yeah. focus on other aspects of the music also, not just like, I had to just pretty much get everything straightened out. So I took about a year and a half off of putting anything out and I deleted all my old stuff and I completely rebranded, rebranded my sound, refined my sound. And that was where I like actually got to the level level where I was like, okay, like I have something here, like this is good. Yeah. And then from there, I like shot the videos, kept developing. And then that was about two years ago now. So then now you're seeing like the, the all that work being uh, rolled out pretty much. And uh, yeah. Damn. Yeah. That's so it was a long... It was a long process for sure. Yeah, but but now the now process led to like four million on TikTok, over over fifteen thousand on uh, Spotify. So that's that's pretty good. Yeah, no, I'm I'm happy. It's uh, I'm happy. Yeah, it's going good. We're just trying to stick to the plan and stay consistent. And uh, yeah, hopefully hopefully good things happen. Yeah. Uh, so when it comes to so you say you listen to a lot of music. Who who are like who are like the people that you looked up to in music? Uh, back then 
back then and then we'll go to now okay so back then i was listening to a lot of um do you know who killy is killy, no. he's a canadian artist um so he was like super popping in like 2017 2018 right. um that's when he released his like debut album um and so i was listening to a lot of his stuff um and even like in my younger days i was listening to a lot of like michael jackson and like childish gambino too gambino uh, yeah gambino yeah. also broke my heart <laughs> why is that so me and my buddies had taken me and my buddy we had tickets to a show in vancouver right oh, okay and we're like all right we're going we had everything set out and then just luckily like that same weekend so his show was on a saturday and the yeah. sunday was like the nba was having some game in vancouver right yeah so it was all planned out perfectly me and my buddy we spent like at least like a grand on every on like the t on like both tickets, tickets planes and like a ho hotel we didn't need because like we were staying at my cousin's house and stuff yeah but then right before like i think it was like two or three days before we we're supposed to head out oh no man broke his fucking foot Charles gambino B gambino broke his foot damn and then he and didn't perform no because then he just he postponed it to like uh later in the year right yeah but but then when he posted, uh, so like, so basically, like, so after he broke his foot, mm. my, the friend that I was going with, he didn't care about basketball whatsoever. Mm. So we ended up just canceling the whole trip, right? Damn, yeah. Yeah. But then, uh, yeah. Then he, like, uh, rescheduled the, he rescheduled the date, but the date was, like, right in the middle of final season. Mm. I think it was, like, December yeah. 12th. Yeah. I had, I had, like, two massive exams like like on those days so you couldn't go no i couldn't go and i was pissed that sucks bro and then gambino's when I, mean, I tried getting try, i tried to get gambino on this show and his manager said nah <laughs> yeah no it's tough so got my heart broken yeah yeah, yeah so gambino did you, and... him, did you tell his manager like yo i was supposed to see him but he broke his foot <laughs> you guys gotta I... make it up to me i sort of said that i said that in like the uh in the in the email no in the email i said Oh, dude, I, uh, I've been to all of his shows in Canada. I, oh, I, had, to, okay. I had to pump it a little bit. Hopefully, yeah. she doesn't, hopefully they don't watch this interview right now. <laughs> <laughs> or else I'm fucked. <laughs> oh, well, but I, I might be getting him on later this year, though. So that might be happening. That'd be crazy. Yeah, so it was that guy and Gambino. And who are, like, your idols now? Like, who do you look up to? Like, these are the boys. Now, yo, it, the thing is, it, it always changes, like, yeah. Um. Really frequently. So it's like right now I'm listening to a lot of like the Kid Leroy and like Ian Dior, Lil Tecca, um, artists like that. But like a couple months ago, I was listening to like a lot of like Canadian music, like like Nav, Houdini, Northside Benji. Um. So it's it's always changing for me. But yeah, yeah, it's always changing for me. But so when it comes to music, like, you have a pretty diverse taste, though. It's pretty diverse, right? Oh uh, yeah, taste. for the most part, yeah. My 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 favorite type of music to listen to is like that like melodic hip-hop or like the pop hip-hop those types of vibes you know yeah yeah like Honestly, me yeah. melody driven yeah. music yeah yeah i feel, I feel like like for me like when it comes to hip-hop i like vibes like something mm -hmm. uh so like um if i'm driving it's a certain type of vibe but if i if i'm just like, chilling in my room certain vibe you know yeah but for go to i i have three go-to rappers for if ever it's hip-hop i'm not even a big hip-hop fan to be honest okay. I, I listen to musicals i listen like the entire hamilton's uh soundtrack i have memorized proper like proper. I, i'm like i'm listen, like i listen to it like non-stop ever since it came out on spotify like 2016 or 17 mm -hmm. and i have the whole thing memorized before i even watched the actual thing jeez That's crazy. and yeah and but yeah for rap it's like like only two rappers I listen to like nonstop: Lil Dicky and Jack Harlow. That's it. Okay, nice. <laughs> only nice. two I actually listen to. Then like I'll throw in like Drake in there or something like that. You know. Yeah, every everyone's gotta, everyone's gotta listen to Drake if you're Canadian, yeah. especially. If you're Canadian, he 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 is like the biggest Canadian of all time. Mm -hmm. It goes him and like. Actually, just, I think it's just Drake, right? Like for music. Yeah, and music like him and Bieber, and The Weeknd. 
Yeah. But has Weekend reached like Bieber and Drake level yet? I think he's like. I think so. He has. I think so. I yeah. I I, I don't know. I think so. Uh, yeah. Actually, yeah, he did. He has like the most streams in Spotify history. Yeah, he's reached yeah. their levels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also think he's like insanely talented. Oh, dude, this guy's amazing. Like, like one of the most talented guys ever. Yeah. How do you feel about his uh, what's it called? His Super Bowl performance. I thought it was sick. I thought he made the best of the restrictions and also like the fact that he was like live singing everything is actually insane. Yeah. It was, it was really well made. Some stuff, I'm like, you didn't have to do this. But a lot of it, I'm like, this shit's fucking fire, bro. Yeah, I think it's sick. And then the way he, like, branded it with his album and stuff. Yeah. And, like, how everyone was, like, wearing the mask, but it looked like their, their face was, like, bandaged up and stuff. I thought that was Yeah. Cool. I don't understand the whole bandage thing. I still don't understand what the whole joke is with that. I think it's a... just, like, his, his branding, like, his way of branding that album. Yeah. But. Well, I'll see. It's pretty sick, though. Cool. It stands out. It stands yeah. out a lot. All right, cool. Now I'm going to send you a link to my song. Okay. Hey, yo. Yes, I got COVID. Hey, yo. Don't be morbid. I've been chilling like a villain. They call me King Pan. How I'm sitting on the throne. After I'm done with Wuhan's business, somebody please throw me a Guinness. Don't offer me a Corona. I'll run away like Daytona. Doctor calling me like, bro, you got COVID. I'm like, dude, tell me you're joking. Doctor's like, bro, why would I lie? I could get sued for malpractice, my guy. COVID, not the vibe, bro. I don't want to die, bro. They say I'm gonna suffer from respiratory problem Guess what bro, I already have them Cause in grade 11 broke my nose Heard a loud crack and now my breathing is all whack Don't even know how this happened Here we go I have been home for a year Looking at pictures of medicine beer Then the doctor says bro you got COVID And now I'm rapping in my room Guys, please be safe Drink some water, stay hydrated, don't go to parties, that is whack. Stay inside and smoke some crack. Stay inside and smoke some crack. Yo, what? <laughs> Yo, that was so funny. That was so funny. That was sick. So do you think I've I have what it takes to become the greatest rapper of all time? Um <laughs> Like no. Well maybe, I don't know. Maybe Damn you'll it. get insane. But uh, that was, that was funny. That was a good time, and that's and it's actually pretty impressive that you did everything yourself too. Yeah, dude. Cause like uh, so so basically like um, cause me and my mom we quarantined ourselves like right after we got tested, right? Yeah. Oh, and also it's good that you're better now. That's the main thing I was gonna say. Yeah, sadly I'm alive. Oh. Sadly, <laughs> sadly I survived. All the fans were mad when they found out. <laughs> Yeah, but like, uh, so basically, me and my mom, we found out we, we basically we got tested, we were quarantined from right after that, right? Mm -hmm. And then I found out, I'm like, fuck, I'm stuck for like, for like, for like 14 days now, I don't know what to do. So I'm like, I'll make a music video, but I couldn't leave my room to go grab all my equipment from my studio downstairs. Did you do it on your phone? No, I, I have like this, uh, is it here? I have a mini camera that I just used for like, uh, for like a little B roll and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not a good camera, but it's like it was good. And no, actually, it was like it was like a really cheap version of like my uh, of like my uh, my webcam camera. And so I did that, and it was good enough. But I'm like, if if I did it when I didn't have COVID, it would have been sick. If I if I had like time to prepare for it. Yeah, and you could have gone all out and everything. Yeah, because basically, like, uh, what happened was like I told my friends, I'm like, I just put a group chat. Like for they're all they're all just roasting me for having COVID, and making jokes like, "Oh, dude, this guy's gonna die in a week." All that stuff, the normal stuff. And then I just hop in. I'm like, "Guys, I made a song." Like what? I'm like, "Yeah, I'm making music right now." Like, can we hear the song? No, fuck off. <laughs> and I disappear for the next like two hours. I make that abomination of a music video. <laughs> yeah. And they're just like, "This is the worst thing we ever." They're like, you sh "This is terrible. Just stop." Don't make music ever again. <laughs> so, uh, what was uh, speaking of that? What's the support that you got from your boys 
like when you when you told him, "Yo, I'm going to LA. I'm dropping heat." Um, yeah, they're they were all for it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think they just kind of like just saw me like really like putting the work in and um sort of like understood that like damn this guy's like really doing it you know all right so as opposed to just being like uh more of like a like a local just like a local soundcloud rapper yeah i guess yeah you could say who's just in his basement he says hey guys i made a song exactly yeah listen to it guys yeah which is like a lot of people (laughs) all right so that's how it was starting out for me like but um yeah but then you went, f- you just, you went full into it, right? I was just like, yo, I'm doing this. Like, I believe in myself. I'm doing this. I love it. I'm doing this. I feel, I feel like at the end of the day, like, that's all you can really do. Just, like, invest in yourself and just hope that shit, like, pans out, right? Yeah, just work hard and just make the right moves. And, and bro, hi, that is it for today's episode of the broadcast. Cam, once again, uh, just pump your shit out real quick. Uh Ooh. Yeah, yeah, Cam Prada on all platforms. Cam Prada on Instagram, K A M P R A D A. We'll link it in the bio as well, so make sure you guys check that out. And as always, make sure you guys remember to stay hydrated and wear a condom. Am right, and we will see you her next time, Barar Hive. Goodbye, kids. Peace.